The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything I know about Max Evasion Destroyers, how we can build them, what is effective to use on them, what they are designed to defeat, and also how we can think about countering them in the late game. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know what I think about battleships and their role as the ship of choice in the late game. What we're going to look at today is a ship that might be not just as good, but actually better and have more tactical flexibility than battleships, which is truly astounding. We're also going to look at what it will take to create these ships, what sacrifices need to be made to ensure that we can have a fleet that will stand the test of time. So with no further ado whatsoever, let's dive straight in and take a look at Max Evasion Destroyers in Stellaris. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Low Ball Class Destroyer. Now this is a very regular looking destroyer that I would probably recommend you build if you can find the components for it. This has of course got neutron launches on it, the best L-slot weapon in the game due to that massive range and high burst damage, along with a medium slot kinetic weapon that is going to help, that is going to help with balancing the damage output on this ship and make sure that we have shield as well as both armor or hull specialized weapons. The important things to note here are the evasion at 47.5%, now that is due to our thrusters. We are at level 4 thrusters giving us a chance to evade of plus 12 and our base of 35 from being a destroyer. Our auxiliary component is the auxiliary fire control that's increasing our basic chance to hit by plus 5 which pushes up the accuracy of this weapon to 95% and the kinetic weapon to 80%. The artillery combat computer is going to give you extra fire rate and weapons range which generally speaking is very useful in the late game. But this evasion isn't that high, we are only at 47.5%. I'm gonna pump those numbers up, those are rookie numbers in this racket. We want to boost that higher because a higher evasion reduces the amount of enemy shots that are going to be able to hit us and therefore works a little like plot armor because it protects our ships from actually being hit rather than regular armor which just increases the overall amount of damage we can take. And if you're enjoying this video please evade that like button. I've changed just two things around. I'm now going to put in the advanced afterburners for an increased 10% evasion and the red sapient combat computer which will boost our evasion by another 10%. That beautiful 20% boost overall pushes up to 56%. Yeah! And this is basically the best that you can hope to get away with if you are a regular empire or a synthetic empire. But if we manage to take the Transcendent Ascension perk and complete the Psionic Ascension, we can get our hands on leaders with the Psychic trait. Psychic is going to add 15% to evasion. If we combine that with Gale Speed for another 5%, and if you're really lucky, something like Brain Slug for a further 5%, we can then push up our evasion all the way up here, as you can see, to 86.6%. Part of this increased evasion has come from putting dark matter thrusters to boost our base chance to evade. You'll need to defeat a fallen empire to get your hands on this technology. And additionally, we've got another base chance to evade a plus five, and that's come from taking the subterfuge tradition tree and unlocking the chance to evade plus five. When we combine all of these bonuses together, we're going to get destroyers with evasion pushing 90%. Yes, you could get this a little bit higher with one of the enigmatic fortress technology pieces, and that could be a replacement for advanced afterburners, but you're not definitely going to get it. Now, what is the point in building destroyers with this high level of evasion? Well, if you've seen my video on battle, ships, you'll know how much I go on about those as the king of the late game. Why is that? Let's have a quick refresh. Okay, so they have an X-slot weapon with range of 150. That means they can get an alpha strike in before any enemy has the chance. This battleship design you're seeing on the screen is pretty much what I'd recommend you build in the late game normally. It's going to have massive damage output with these neutron launchers and a giga cannon combined, lots of extra range and fire rate from the computer here, but let's see what happens when we test this design up against an equivalent number of destroyers based on economy and interestingly naval capacity as well. So this test is going to be economy and naval capacity combined. We are giving these battleships the precognitive interface to give them extra tracking of plus 10, combine that with the plus 15 from sensors and another plus 10 from operational security and these battleships 
ships have a reasonable amount of tracking at a base of 35. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to get your hands on Stellaris or any of the other DLCs, and you'd also like to support this channel, then you're in luck. Until the 24th of June, you can get 75% off Stellaris and up to 50% off of the DLC by following the link down in the description below and going to the Humble Bundle store. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to all of the patrons and channel members who help support this channel. And as you can see, the battleships do get a great first strike off and they destroy quite a few destroyers straight out of the gate. But then something interesting starts to happen. The destroyers you see have very high evasion and that means the battleships are finding it harder and harder to continue to hit them. That negates a large amount of the battleships overall damage. And generally what happens is the battleships actually lose out to the destroyers in the end and are defeated. Now I've run this test quite a bit. The battleships do come out ahead against these destroyers some of the time, but it's only in the region of around 20 to 30 percent of the actual engagements. More often than not, these max evasion destroyers will cut through the enemy battleships and live to tell the tale. There are a couple of factors I am neglecting here. If you can get a Titan in the battleship fleet and get a plus 10 tracking there, that should help you balance the odds of the engagement and finding an admiral with the gale speed and psychic trait along with brain slugs can be somewhat difficult but that places this maximum evasion destroyer right up there as a late game tool you can use against battleships. An important thing to remember as well is the speed of these destroyers is much greater than battleships. And that means that you'll be able to outrun the enemy giving you a tactical advantage as well as a strategic advantage. But what do you think about these maximum evasion destroyers? Let me know down in the comments below. I did promise to talk about it however, and now we're going to look at how to counter these destroyers. And finally, some of you may be very pleased to see that cruisers have a role in our fleets. Here we have a anti-evasion cruiser, and what makes it that? Well, we're going to go with the precognitive interface, as you'll find the psionic combat computers have the highest tracking bonuses. Combine that with auxiliary fire control, we want to boost our accuracy as high as possible, along with our tracking and thus hit as much as possible. And of course, put on the best sensors you can find. When we combine this all up, we take into account the tradition for plus 10, the precognitive interface at plus 50, and the tachyon sensors all together for a total of plus 65. That's going to mean the destroyers only get to use even at the maximum evasion of 90, 25% evasion. Yes, battleships do have the range advantage and that is going to hurt your destroyers in the beginning. And in comparison to that, cruisers do not have a range advantage. Their L slot and M slot weapons are going to be equivalent to a destroyers. In fact, one of these cruisers is pretty much equivalent to two destroyers. But whilst the battleships are suffering from a lower tracking because they do not have access to the picket combat computer, the cruisers have no such issue. And if you find yourself coming up against evasion destroyers, you probably want to start building cruisers and thus we have a perfect rock paper scissors situation. The designs in today's video did feature a lot of psionic components. If you'd like to know more about those components and the psionic ascension that generates them, click the video on screen now.